Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in a Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Tasting. One, two, three. Tasting. Tasting is the test. Pour out a heaping bowl full of delicious, crisp, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice. Top it with milk or cream and fruit. Mmm, mmm, your mouth waters at the sight. Then take a big spoonful, and ah, what a taste delight. Those crisp, king-size kernels of Quaker-popped wheat or rice are so deliciously tender, so nut-like in flavor, you want more and more. Taste them tomorrow morning for sure. Crisp, fresh, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. Shot from gun. When the People's Bank of Seattle closed its doors and its president disappeared, a severe financial blow was dealt to many small depositors. Among them were young Bob Warren and his wife Connie. It was with bitterness that they read reports of the bank's failure in their local newspaper. Every cent we have in the world's gone, Connie. We're wiped out. And that's not the half of it. What do you mean, not the half of it, Bob? My boss had his money in Jim Bledsoe's bank. He's wiped out, too. Right out of business. You mean you're out of a job? Yes. Shop closed this afternoon. I don't know what we'll do now. We'll get along, Bob, somehow. I'd like to get my hands on Jim Bledsoe. Dirty thief and crook. Bob, it says in the newspaper that he didn't steal the money. The run was started on his bank when one of his depositors got mad at him and withdrew money. Then started a dirty rumor. Yeah, newspaper's just trying to cover up for the crook. Oh, I don't believe that. The newspaper wouldn't protect a crooked banker. Then why has Jim Bledsoe disappeared? I don't know, but he must have a reason. Sure he has. He's a crook, and he knew he'd be arrested if he stayed in Seattle. Somehow, Bob, I I just don't believe that. Suit yourself, Connie. But if I ever get my hands on Jim... If Mr. Bledsoe's crooked, the law will get him eventually. Well, I gotta get a job. Might as well start looking right now. Do you have any prospects? Not much. Just this ad I tore out of the paper. What is it? It says, wanted. Young man familiar with care and repair of mining tools and equipment. Good pay, but but must leave city. Bob, that's right in your line. Where do you apply for the job? There's no address, just a box number. I'll have to write a letter of application. Well, you do it right now, don't we? Bob wrote a letter and got the job that meant he must leave the city. A few weeks later, he and his wife were at a mining camp far up the Pelican River in the Yukon Territory. One morning, soon after breakfast, Bob returned unexpectedly to their cabin. Bob, did you forget something? No, I just got some news. Oh, is it good or bad? Depends on how you look at it. They're they're closing the mine for the winter. Closing it? And we're out of a job again, and we practically just got here. Wait, listen, Connie. They gotta have someone stay in camp and keep the engines in order and look after things. Yes. The boss says I can have the job if I want it. What did you tell him? Well, I'd have to talk it over with you. Well, of course we'll stay. Now wait a minute, Connie. Better think it over first. It's gonna be mighty lonesome for you. Nonsense. After all, I'll have you. All right. If you're sure you won't be unhappy. I think it'll be exciting. 
Why, we'll have plenty of supplies and we'll get paid for staying. Yeah, but what if one of us gets sick or is hurt and needs a doctor? What then? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Nearest doctor's in Deerfield, 20 miles or more from here. Bob, nothing will happen. Let's stay. All right, Connie. I'll tell the boss we'll take the job. Good. A few days later, Sergeant Preston and the great dog Yukon King arrived at the town of Deerfield. After checking in at the local hotel, the Mountie, still attired in his fur parka, which concealed the red tunic, entered the cafe to be greeted by the proprietor, Joe Hicks. Sergeant Preston and King. How are you, Joe? Well, I couldn't be better, Sergeant, and I'm mighty glad to see two old friends. Oh, thanks. But you might prove it with a cup of that fine coffee you make. You bet I will. <laughs> Sit down at that table. I'll be back with it in a minute. Thanks, Joe. Come on, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston didn't notice two men seated at a table across the big room. But one of them, Mush Robert, saw and recognized the Mountie. He leaned across the table and spoke in a low voice to his companion. Tex, that man with a dog is a Mountie. Mountie? Yeah, name is Preston. He might be looking for us. What do we do? He hasn't seen us yet. Just sit quiet for a minute. Joe's getting coffee for him. We'll watch our chance to get out of here. Better not try to get him, Mush. It'd be better if we leave one at a time. I guess you're right. You leave and head for the cabin. I'll meet you there later. <laughs> right. Joe returned with two cups of coffee and sat down at Sergeant Preston's table. Yeah, there you are, Sergeant. Brings you to Deerfield, Sergeant. I'm to meet a man here, a fellow named Bledsoe. Bledsoe? I don't believe I have ever heard of him. Oh? Huh? Here's a picture of him. Hey, I know him. You do? Sure. Only around here he's known as Sundown Jim. He's one of the luckiest Chichacos that ever hit the Yukon. Struck it rich about a month ago. Run into a gold pocket as big as the moon. What's his real name, you say? Bledsoe. Jim Bledsoe. Used to be a banker in Seattle. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Bank went broke and ruined hundreds. That's right. Why'd he send for you? Pardon me a moment, Joe. What's the matter, Sergeant? Where are you going? That man heading for the door. I want him. As Tex Barber reached the door, Sergeant Preston gripped his arm. Not so fast, Tex. Hey, uh... Don't try to pull a gun. A Mountie. Yes. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. What do you do, Sergeant? He's wanted for robbery and murder. Robbery and murder? As the customers in the cafe crowded about the Mountie and the outlaw, Sergeant Preston failed to see Mush Roberts leave quietly through a rear door. When he had disarmed his prisoner, Sergeant Preston asked, you're stopping at the tavern, Tex? No, I have a cabin on the edge of town. My gear is there. Well, got it. I want to examine your pack. Want me to go along with you, Sergeant? That won't be necessary, Joe. I'll have King with me. Come on, King. Let's go, fella. <laughs> Sergeant Preston and his prisoner, with King at their heels, pushed their way through the crowd and into the night. Tex Barber, who had seen his friend Mush Roberts leave the cafe ahead of them, set a slow pace but made no resistance. Presently, he turned off the deserted street and approached a darkened cabin. There's the cabin, Monty. You had keys when I searched you. You need one to open it? No, it's not locked. I'll open the door. Go ahead. Sergeant Preston didn't suspect that Mush Roberts had slipped through a rear door of the cafe and hurried to the cabin, where he was waiting behind the door with his gun raised like a club. All right, you first, Tex. Come on, King. King sensed something wrong and tried to give a warning. What's the matter, fella? <laughs> you got him. Look out for the dog. Get away. Oh, shoot him, Mush. Shoot him. No, it'll rouse the whole town. Get out, quick. Get out. Mush Roberts and Tex Barber fought their way to the door and slammed it behind them. Why didn't you shoot him, Mush? I torn my arm off. Oh, a shot would have brought the whole town down on our ears. That dog went for me, too. What do we do about the Mountie? Oh, I hit him pretty hard. He won't come to for a long time. Why, then? Yeah? Might be frozen to death. There's no fire in the cabin. That's right. Let's get out of here. We got no blankets or gear. No grub. We won't last a day in this weather. I know where we can get everything we need. Where? At the mining camp 20 miles south of here. It closed down a few days ago. Come on, Tex. Well, the camp will be under some kind of guard. Don't let that bother you. We'll take care of the guard. Uh, 
Meanwhile, the arrest of Tex Barber provoked excited conversation among the customers in the cafe. Finally, one of the waiters asked the proprietor, Joe, what happened to the fellow with him? With who? With Tex Barber. What are you talking about? When Barber came in, he was with another fella. A big hombre with a scar on his nose. Well, they sat down over there at that table. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. I served him. Well, he, he must have been the man I saw leave by the back door when the ruckus started. You saw a man sneak out the back way? Well, I wouldn't say he sneaked out. He just walked out. But he had a scar on his nose. I saw it. Then he's the one who came in with Tex Barber. Right. Why didn't you tell Sergeant Preston about it? I just happen to remember it now. So did I. Oh, we can tell the sergeant when he gets back. Well, I'm not waiting until he gets back. Where's my uh, right here? What are you going to do, Joe? Well, I heard Tex Barber tell Preston that he was living in the cabin on the edge of town. Must be the one that had the forensic sign on it last week. I'm heading down that way. I'll go with you, Joe. Me too. Uh, sure. Someone get the doctor. He may be needed. I okay. hope we don't get there too late to prevent murder. Huh? Right. Come on, boys. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. A bullseye for flavor. Yes, in every spoonful of the ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns, you enjoy swell, nut-like flavor. A bullseye for Christmas. Yes, there's tender melt-in-your-mouth crispness in those king-size kernels of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. A bullseye for nourishment. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. You're always on the target when you reach for that famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Pour out a bowl full of crisp, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit. Man, oh man, these giant, flavor-rich premium grains are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. They're shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Shot through and through with nut-like flavor, too. Buy both delicious kinds. For variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Just remember... They're never sold in bags or bulk. You can't miss with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The famous cereals shot from guns. Now to continue. Joe Hicks, proprietor of the cafe, led the group of heavily armed miners toward the cabin on the outskirts of town. When its outline appeared faintly in the darkness, he halted them. Uh, just a minute, man. We may be wasting time. How do you mean, Joe? Uh, there's no one in that cabin. No light in it. Why you can't see it? They'd come here in the first place. They'd be there now, and they'd have a light. Preston said he wanted to go through Tex Barber's gear. Yeah, that's right. Say, there's another vacant cabin on the other side of town. Maybe that's the one they went to. Well, then we'd better turn back. No use wasting time here. Hey, listen. The dog's barking in that cabin. It must be King. Come on, man. Right. I'll go in first. You men keep me covered. Okay, yeah. right behind you. Them crooks will know better than to try to shoot their way out now. Go on, Joe. It's King, all right. Easy, King, easy. We're here to help you. Where's Sergeant Preston? I'll strike the light. There. Can you see now, Joe? Yeah. Hey, here he is. Yeah, let the doctor look at him, Joe. And he's been shot or slugged. Can't make out which. Someone light the lamp, eh? I'll light it. Now, boys, move back, will you? Just give me a little right. room. Right. There. Here's the lantern. Yeah, hold it close. Is he dead, Doc? No, no, he's alive. But he's unconscious. Uh, easy now, King. Your boss is going to be all right. Uh, now help me, fellas. Help okay. me. Right, right. We'll take him back to the cafe. Right. Now, easy. The following morning, Connie Warren was cooking breakfast when her young husband came in. What have you been doing, Bob? Building a head of steam on the donkey engine. Whew, it's cold outside. Why are you firing up the engine? 
I thought it had been drained for the winter. Oh, we're going to run short of firewood. There's a pile of it down at the end of the donkey tracks. Use the engine to haul it up here. That's a good idea. It'll save you half to cut down trees and split it into wood. Now sit down. Breakfast is ready. Swell, honey. Sure am hungry. Bob Warren hurried through his breakfast and left Connie to clear the table and do the dishes. A few moments after he had walked out of the cabin, she was startled by a heavy explosion. Bob! 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 Oh, Bob! From the door of the cabin, she could see what had happened. The boiler of the donkey engine was split wide open and live steam foamed out. Then she saw her husband lying helpless in the snow. Bob! Oh, Bob! Speak to me, Bob! Safety bag. Rose. Blew up. You're hurt. Hurt bad. Oh, Bob, I, I've got to get you to the cabin. Bob Warren sank into unconsciousness as his wife struggled to lift him. He was a dead weight. She couldn't budge him and she became frantic. And then, in the distance, she heard... A dog team. Someone's coming. Oh, thank goodness. A few moments later, a team of huskies raced to a stop beside her. From the huge cap of a fur parka, she saw the face of a middle-aged man, a large man. Hurry! Oh, hurry! He surveyed the situation for a fleeting second and then tied his team to a nearby tree. His dogs curled up in the snow and the man turned to Connie. I was on my way to Deerfield when I heard the explosion. We've got to get him to the cabin. I tried, but I couldn't budge him. Now you go get the bed ready for him. Get water on the stove and I'll bring him in. Oh, okay. dear. The stranger carried Bob Warren into the cabin and placed him in bed, and then began a careful examination of his injuries. How badly is he hurt? Arms broken. He's scalded from the steam. We've got to get him to a doctor. There's one in Deerfield, and you have a sled and dog. I'd better set the broken arm before he regains consciousness. Can you do it? Yes. I'll cut splints and set it at once. Then I'll put him on my sled and take him to Deerfield. When Bob's broken arm had been set and ointment put on his burns, the stranger and Connie went outside to the sled. He let her carry his camping gear into the house while he carried two heavy rawhide bags, which he placed on the table. Yeah, I'll leave these here with you. Need all the room on the sled for your husband. You pardon me, but I think I've seen you before. In Deerfield, perhaps. No, I've never been to Deerfield. Uh, uh, but your face is familiar. Their conversation was interrupted by Bob Warren, who began to mumble incoherently. Get you. Let's, oh, he, oh, he's trying to say something. He may be delirious. I'll get you. I'll get you someday. Uh, when I do, you go to jail, Jim Bledsoe. What? What did he say? Oh, he, uh, he's out of his head. I'll get you, Jim Bledsoe. I'll get you. But the name, he keeps repeating it. Yes, uh, he's talking about a man named Bledsoe. Well, is it someone he knows? Jim Bledsoe was a banker back home. Get you. His bank closed and he disappeared. Uh, we lost everything we had. I see. Bob has hated Bledsoe ever since it happened. Uh, At times I think he would kill him if he ever found him. Bledsoe. How much did you lose in the bank's uh, failure, Mrs. Get you. Um, Warren? I'm Connie Warren. Yes, Miss Warren. We uh, lost all our savings, about five thousand uh, dollars. The stranger turned and walked to the table where he had deposited the two heavy rawhide bags. Connie watched him with curiosity as he began unlacing the opening of one of them. What are you going to do? Pay a debt for Jim Bledsoe. Pay a debt for Jim Bledsoe? Did you know him? Yes, Mrs. Warren. I knew him well. <gasps> two men! Don't make a move, either of you. Come on, Tex. Who are you, and what do you want here? They're armed. Take it easy, sister. Get his gun, Tex. I'll keep him covered. He has one gun. Forty-five. Here's another. Hey, mister, you towed plenty of hardware, don't you? Now, search the guy in the well, bunk. He may be playing possum. No, can't you see he's been badly hurt? We've got to get him to a doctor in Deerfield. Yes, he's right, Marsh. This fellow's been banged up. His arm's in splints. He's all bandaged. There's nothing here you want. Just let us alone so we can take my husband to Deerfield. If you take him, you're going to walk. What? what do you mean by that? We need a dog team and supplies and a sled to carry them. We're taking the team that's outside. But you can't do that. My husband will die. Sorry, ma'am, but oh. if we don't put plenty of miles between us and Deerfield, we'll die. Now, Tex, start gathering up blankets and grub while I keep these two quiet. Right, Marsh. Tex looted the cabin of supplies and blankets while Marsh studied the face of the stranger. Hey, um, what's your name, mister? Why should that interest you? 
I have a feeling I've seen you before, somewhere. I think you're wrong. I know I never saw you before. Well, Marsh, I got everything we need on a sled. We're ready to pull out of here. What do we do with these two? Tie them up, I guess. But Tex, wait a minute. You ever see this fellow before? Him? Yeah. I'd swear I have. Face is familiar. Yeah, it is. Hey, he can't... Yeah, you recognize him? Why, sure. Mush, you remember the banker who disappeared from Seattle after his bank went bust? What? Bledsoe. Sure, that's who it is. Bledsoe. I saw his picture in the newspapers. Holy smoke. Yes, that's it. I knew I'd seen his picture in the papers. It is Bledsoe. Yes, Mrs. Warren, it's true. I'm Bledsoe. You're the man who ruined us and ruined others, too. Quiet, you. Tex, take a look at those bags on the table. Maybe they hold the loot he stole from the bank. I stole nothing from the bank. Go ahead, Tex, take a look. Holy smoke, there's a fortune in gold here. Raw gold. Well, looks like this is our lucky day. We not only get dogs and supplies, but we get a banker's fortune. And he won't dare squawk to the mounties. They're looking for him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get it to the sled. Then come back here and we'll tie him up before we leave. Uh, all I can lift. You'll never get away. The mounties will get you. Shut up, Blenso. Hey, Marsh, look. Now, what's wrong, Tex? The Mountie and his dog, they're heading here. Well, get out of sight and shut the door. He's seen me already. What do we do, Marsh? Kill him. Out of the way, Tex. I'll drop him. Jim Bledsoe, the one-time Seattle banker, saw Mush Roberts turn to fire at Sergeant Preston and realized that if he was to save the life of the Mountie, he must risk his own. But he didn't hesitate. <laughs> he swung his heavily booted foot at the table, upsetting it. Oh, oh. The upset table struck the outlaw and spoiled his aim, sending the shot into the jam of the door. Bledsoe heard a shout from outside the cabin as the two bandits whirled about to face him. The great dog king rushed through the door to seize Tex Barber's gun arm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jim Bledsoe, the banker, grappled with Mush Roberts for possession of the gun. Give me that gun! No, you don't! When Sergeant Preston reached the open door, he recognized Jim Bledsoe. To use his gun might endanger the banker's life. Sergeant Preston entered the fight with swinging fists. Tex reeled under the impact of Sergeant Preston's blows. He tried futilely to reach the gun which had fallen to the floor. This will take care of you. Oh, oh. Gun, Mountie. Can I have it. Mush Roberts heard voices outside the cabin. A glance told him that a group of men led by Joe Hicks were closing in. Come on, Tex, run. No, you don't. Don't move, Tex. We can't get away, Mush. Get your hands up. Wait, don't shoot. We quit. We I arrest quit. both of you for robbery and murder in the name of the Queen. How'd you find us, Preston? That was easy. After my friends found and revived me, King picked up your trail. He had good reason to hate both of you. This, this must be your lucky day, Cinevars. What do you mean by that? That fellow there. He's Jim Bledsoe, the Seattle banker who disappeared. You're wrong about him, Mush. I don't want him. You what? don't? No. I might have expected it. A man can steal from his own bank and the law don't do a thing about it. But take me and Tex. Well, that's different. We'll hang. You'll hang, no doubt of that. But I was on my way to Deerfield to meet Bledsoe when I ran into you and Tex. Sergeant, I was going to surrender. There's no surrender involved, Bledsoe. But I don't understand. I'll explain later. Right now, that man on the bunk there seems to need a doctor's care. Is there a doctor with you, Sergeant? Yes. Take over, Doc. You better have you, Sergeant. Out of the way, men. The prisoners were handcuffed and removed from the cabin where members of the posse stood guard over them. Connie provided the doctor with medicines from the company's stores, and soon he turned to face the little group watching him. Bledsoe? Yes, Doctor. You did a good job of fixing Warren up. His arm's perfectly set, and you took care of his burns very well. It's a good thing you were here. You saved his life. Yes, Mr. Bledsoe. You saved his life. And paid a debt long overdue. Sergeant, you said you'd explain something. Well, suppose you explain why you disappeared after your bank closed. Gladly. I'd made some investments that were bad. I knew I couldn't pay off dollar for dollar to my depositors with a few assets left after the run. I swore to myself I'd see that every cent was paid back. But I knew that would take time. So you came to the Yukon and took the name of Sundown Jim? Yes. I never stole a cent from anybody. Well, Sergeant, I, I discovered gold. Enough to pay back the depositors with interest in full. And I wrote you a letter saying I'd surrender to you. You thought there was an embezzlement charge against you? Yes, there was talk in the newspapers about it after the bank closed. There never has been a charge against you, Jim. What? Investigation of the bank records prove everything you've said. But I... 
I thought the law wanted me. We wanted to find you to tell you you'd been cleared. You see, Jim, the mounted police protect the innocent as well as prosecute the guilty. That's right, Jim. Well, then, I'm free? Yes. Well, just the same, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm paying back every depositor. And Mrs. Warren, you and your husband are the first to be repaid. Oh. Sergeant, will you open the bags of gold? Gladly, Jim. When Bob hears this, he'll get well quickly, won't he, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt of it, Mrs. Warren, and I guess he'll be glad to admit that Mr. Bledsoe isn't as bad as he thought. There you are, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Sergeant. I'll weigh it up. Now, King, let's go get our prisoner. <laughs> yes, boy. As far as Jim Bledsoe's concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. There's still time, fellas and girls. Go to your grocers. Ask for the exciting new Yukon Trail packages of swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. There are eight different packages that come with these larger, easier-to-build Yukon cutout models. There are 59 exciting models in all. You hear about many of them in these adventures of Sergeant Preston and King. For instance, you get models of the Dead Dutchman Gold Mine and of a lumber camp. You get Sergeant Preston's cabin and the White Horse Jail. The Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters at Dawson. The Yukon Queen Riverboat with a paddle that turns. Remember, there are different models on different packages. Don't miss out on any of these thrilling Yukon Trail models. Get them all. There's no waiting, no box tops or coupons, no money to send. These 59 fascinating Yukon Trail models are yours at no extra cost. But remember, you get them only on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The original crisp, fresh, shot from gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. You'll want the complete set of eight Yukon Trail packages. They're at your grocer's now. Hurry. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the lost lady. Lady was a beautiful golden white collie. She belonged to young Ty Watson, and when she was stolen, the boy lost more than a friend. You see, Ty had lost his sight, and without Lady, he was helpless. Lady came home finally, but with her there were three desperate men. When I knocked on the door of the Watson cabin that night in March, Diane and his father were prisoners, and an outlaw gun was leveled at the door. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>